Hey everybody, Dr. Legrand here. And today we're going to be talking about the trick to managing ADHD without medication. Now, I'm not here to just say like, you know, it, it, doing no medications is like uh, beyond an all answer. Um, I just know a lot of people that do struggle where medications actually don't work for you. And maybe you're one of those people. And, you know, about 20 to 30% of people who are diagnosed with ADHD, um, across the board, research has shown that AC medications don't work for them. So this might be in your case. And so it's important to know what you can do. And maybe you're also in a situation where maybe it has kind of worked with you, but you're not sure um, if there's maybe other alternatives that you can use. So I'm here to share that with you. And the best way I could kind of show this is just kind of go through, help you kind of go through my mindset. So I'm going to present a case here um, and kind of just this uh, individual. Um, she was in her upper 30s. And she was having all the very common kind of ADHD symptoms you experience. Um, and these are kind of the lists that she had. Uh, she had low energy. She had focus issues. She was also dealing with um, irritability, uh, stress and anxiety, depression, IBS, which is irritable bowel syndrome, so digestive complaints, lack of motivation and drive at work. So she definitely was having struggle at work and you know was concerned about losing her job. She also had poor memory. Uh, she had painful cycles, mood changes. And then she also was experiencing where the medications weren't really quite working for her. Um, she was having a lot of side effects of it where she was feeling more agitated. Uh, it was also impacting her sleep quite a bit. And so there's a lot of different complications that were going on here. So the very first step that I will usually take when it comes to, you know, trying to manage your ADHD without medications is first, you know, presenting all the symptoms like I just showed you right here. You want to be able to look at all the symptoms because there are so many other health complications that can present just like ADHD symptoms that we need to understand. So once we've done that, the next step would be, of course, really doing further investigation to understand, okay, why is this individual having these types of symptoms? So in her case, I wanted to first look at hormones to be able to see, okay, why are you dealing with low energy? Why are you having mood changes, irritability, anxiety? Let's look at some hormones here to see if there's a possibility that could be contributing to this. So first off, you know, I did like to test, you know, her cortisol levels and you could see that her cortisol levels were definitely low in the morning and afternoon. And that explained a lot of why her uh, energy levels were definitely low. The other thing here too, uh, to kind of point out is when I test her hormone levels, just her DHEA levels were low. Now, DHEA is a precursor that actually helps build estrogen, I mean, estradiol, and also testosterone. So it's usually an early sign indication of definitely some hormone issues. So it's important to address this early on in testing for this. So in her case, you know, I wanted to add something like adrenal support uh, to help to have her take it first thing in the morning as well as midday. Uh, to really bring those levels up to help with improving her energy and her stress as well. And then doing 25 milligrams of DHEA because her levels were really low. And so that was really important to incorporate. Now, taking it a step further, I wanted to understand more of what was going on with the anxiety and her focus and motivation and drive. And this kind of goes more for the investigation, looking at basically neurotransmitters to see which ones are out of balance, as well as different amino acids that build those specific types of neurotransmitters. So some of the big ones that came up with her is certainly uh, her PA levels uh, were really low, her tyrosine levels were low, her tyramine levels were low, her dopamine levels were low, um, her also uh, 3MT levels were low, which is a breakdown of dopamine, and serotonin levels were low. So no wonder she felt really depressed because she had low levels of serotonin. Um, also 5-HIAA, which is also a breakdown of serotonin, those levels were low, and her GABA levels were low, which has a lot to do with our mood, her glycine levels were low. Uh, yes, glycine levels were low. So a lot of these levels are low and no wonder she was not focused, motivated, not motivated or driven. And she also was dealing with depression, anxiety, agitation. All of these indicators were significantly low. And this is why it's so important to see, okay, which ones are low and now we know what to implement. So in her case, you know, I added D-alphanalanine to help improve these levels. Um, also help with even tyrosine because PA is a breakdown of tyrosine and tyrosine is breakdown in building, help building dopamine. So it also will help with the dopamine. Also L-theanine, I added L-theanine because L-theanine is great for dopamine as well as for serotonin and GABA because L-theanine can cross the blood brain barrier and increase GABA levels. So that's why that's a great one. I added Dopa Boost, which has Macuna Peruns, which is considered L-Dopa, which uh, does help improve dopamine levels 
And so that's why I add that there. It also has an acetyl tyrosine because her tyrosine levels were low too. I added 5-HTP because of her serotonin levels. So usually 5-HTP is a break uh, that helps build serotonin levels. So that's why I add 5-HTP also because of her sleep issues. I was hoping that could also improve that in which it did. And then added glycine. Uh, because again, her glycine levels are low. And this also can impact mood significantly. Um, so that's important. And then added a B complex because B vitamins are really critical for helping building a lot of these different types of neurotransmitters. Now, I know I'm in the way. <laughs> I always forget that I'm in the way there, but those last two is glycine and B complex. Now, some additional notes um, to take note here. It's very important is supplements are great. They're, they're, you know, they're a great initial start but it's not the complete answer, uh, in my opinion, to really managing your ADHD, especially in the long term. Um, supplements is something good to start with, but the supplementing is something you're not getting in your diet and something you're not getting in your lifestyle. And that should be your long-term goal is nutrition and lifestyle changes to really help managing your ADHD without medication. So some other additional notes that are really point uh, to bring out is she was dealing with, uh, she, her, she had a very high carb, low protein intake. After doing a couple uh, diet journals with her, realized that, yeah, she was just not getting enough protein in her diet. Um, and she was dealing with a heavy, uh, heavy painful uh, cycles and periods. Um, and so that's definitely add a lot of complication there, um, especially with heaviness uh, that can really cause issues with low B, B vitamin as well as iron um, and causing symptoms of fatigue and mood changes. Um, and she worked mostly indoors. So I was a little concerned about this because she worked mostly indoors and she was still dealing with fatigue. And she had like a hard time falling asleep and staying asleep. And that was definitely an indicator of definitely the serotonin being low uh, is a big one um, that can impact that. And so um, what I did uh, to do really kind of because remember, she was low in dopamine and tyrosine, which are really heavily and even PEA are really heavily reliant on a high protein diet. So remember, she isn't really doing much protein. So I really emphasize the proteins and also veggies. Um, were some two big ones that we needed to incorporate because a lot of the veggie minerals uh, that she was deficient in that we needed to incorporate. And so those were some of the two big ones. So that way she used food as her medicine. Then um, I wanted to test her gut because remember she was dealing with IBS, so irritable bowel syndrome. Now it's really important to test everything, look at the body as a whole when we are trying to really use natural ways of managing your HD without medication. So you got to do the whole, look at the whole body. That is how this works is by looking at everything uh, based off of your symptoms. And so with her case, you know, I wanted to do further investigation. So we did a gut flora, tested that. And sure enough, she had imbalances of her flora. Um, and so we needed to add something like a probiotic as well as some pancreatic enzymes. And she also, um, her pH levels. So I do like testing people's stomach acidity. Hers was at 7.6. I like to see this between 6.0 to 6.4 which means she is running more alkaline. So adding something like betaine HCL can really help bring those levels down to help breaking down the foods and then pancreatic enzymes to break down the macronutrients and then the probiotics to help increase uh, more of the good gut flora, right? And balancing those things out, okay? So once we did that, that a lot of her IBS symptoms really dissipated. And because the reason why this is critical is because 90 to 95% of a lot of our neurotransmitters are made in the gut. And this is why gut health is so important when it comes to ADC, because it's really is like a second brain. It's what if your gut is not working optimally, guess what? Your brain is not going to work optimally. All right. So next thing is definitely the foods, right? So remember, we got transit foods. Uh, supplements is great, but I like to phase out supplements and making sure that we're actually consuming good, healthy foods. They're going to actually use this as a long term. So in her case, um, when I see this, um, we definitely need to incorporate more bitter and sour foods and high fibrous foods as well. So apple cider vinegar, 100% cranberry juice, grape, uh, grapefruit, um, you know, other bitter herbs and things that are just more sour, even uh, kefir, kimchi, sauerkraut. All those things are great because they have natural probiotics as well as ways to stimulate the liver, the gallbladder to actually naturally also increase, uh, naturally increasing pancreatic enzymes, digestive enzymes. All right. So then um, a few of the things I want to test for is because I want to make sure I roll out everything here too is I want to test her thyroid and her thyroid levels were fine. Her free T3, free T4, um, even her iron and ferritin, which I did have a concern because of her heavy painful cycles, but those were fine as well. And um, so, but I want to uh, test for even things like her uh, micronutrient testing. And so one that did definitely came back was her low vitamin D. Uh, and so by switching this out and adding uh, 10,000 IUs of vitamin D for three months, 
uh, really made a difference in her energy for sure. So after implementing all these things, and especially implementing the nutrition and the lifestyle changes, it was like a nine day difference for her. She felt like, you know, when she was at work, um, she couldn't function. Um, she felt tired, always coming home and then switching all of this. She actually found she didn't need to rely on her medication because it wasn't really working for her. Like it, it helped with the focus, but it came with a lot of complications with causing her sleep issues, causing agitation and anxiety. So even some heart palpitations. So she was really concerned about taking it long term. So by switching this, she actually found that she didn't need to take her Ritalin anymore. And that was a big win for her. And she was able to function and have better focus and energy and just better overall. So, I mean, you know, if this is something that you are struggling with and have similar kind of results, I mean, similar type of symptoms, just like this case and other kind of cases that I do look at, and you would like to find out this information, finally actually tackle your ADHD. The best thing to do is really, you know, uh, is just take that first step and working with me is booking a consultation with me. And so, you know, I had to figure this stuff out and I went to medical school and, you know, it required further investigation and, you know, as an investment, but it was really important for me. And also going to medical school, I spent over $500,000 just doing medical school and continuing education, but you don't need to do that. That is something you don't need to do. I've already done the heavy lifting for you. Uh, most people don't realize that they will see in research that they waste over a million dollars in their lifetime when they don't treat their EDC because of not being productive, being efficient, losing jobs and all sorts of different opportunities. So I certainly don't want that to happen to you. So really what you got to do is just, you know, book a 45 minute uh, to 60 minute consultation with me as a $750 value. I also uh, includes a focus mindset questionnaire assessment. That's $197 value. Along with that, um, you do get access if you do purchase today, um, access to our EDC health course, which has a $297 value. So full value of everything, 1,244, and you get it all today just for 297 bucks. So all you gotta do is just click on the link in the description below uh, to purchase that consultation. Like I said, um, this is limited time offer. So if you want to take advantage of that, so you just click in the description below. And then once you click there, um, you'll come here to this page, you'll put in your information, purchase the, the consultation, then you will uh, pick a date and time that's available to you. You can also email me if uh, for some reason the time zone does work, but usually I have plenty of time zones um, that should be work for you. Uh, once you put in your information, then it'll take you to this landing page. Make sure it's really important. Once you have purchased to make sure to check your email, you should have two emails. You should have one that, uh, uh, is confirmation for your appointment. And then two is, um, to activate your practice better account. This is our client portal, uh, that's HIPAA compliant. So that way you can actually, um, fill out the questionnaire, but also if you have any labs in the past year, I would say, uh, just standard labs from your doctor, go ahead and upload those into practice better. So I can look over those if you have them, it is a requirement, but if you have some, uh, definitely can do that as well. And then make sure to block out the 45 minutes to 60 minutes, show up early. Um, and then like, yeah, like I said, all you gotta do is just click in the, uh, description below to book that consultation. If you really want to tackle your HD and actually see, uh, what we'll do in this appointment is really investigate, um, what kind of testing is going to be best for you. Once I've got a chance to look over your medical history, as well as meet with you and actually create an action plan for you. So that you can finally tackle your HD and get the same similar results, just like this case study that I did for this gal, uh, and several other different patients. So like I said, just click that link in the description below. Uh, thank you guys so much for attending and I'll see you guys in the next live stream. Thanks. Bye.